The distributive law describes how multiplication distributes over addition and subtraction. When you expand a product using the distributive law, you rewrite the expression without brackets by distributing the multiplication over the addition or subtraction. For example, if you have 4 brackets b plus 6, you rewrite that as 4 lots of b plus 4 lots of 6, which is 4b plus 24. You've turned the original product into a sum. But if we're clever, we might be able to go back the other way, from the sum at the bottom to the product at the top. To do that, we would have to look at the 24 and be able to recognise it as 4 times 6. See how important it is to know your times tables? Because if we can do that, write 24 as 4 times something, then we'll have a common factor of 4. And that means we can rewrite the expression as 4 times another factor, in this case b plus 6. This process is called factorising because we're taking out a common factor. We're rewriting a sum as a product of factors. So, to formalise the process, to factorise a sum or difference, determine the highest common factor that will divide every term in the expression and then rewrite the expression with that highest common factor outside the brackets. In this example, the highest common factor was 4. Let's try some more examples. 6 plus 2a. To factorise this expression, I need to work out the highest common factor. What's the largest factor that divides both 6 and 2a? It's 2. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times a is 2a. So, write it again with a 2 outside some brackets. What goes inside the brackets? The other parts of the terms that were left when I divided out the common factor of 2. 3 plus a. If you want to check your answer, just try expanding the brackets again. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times a is 2a. When you get better at this, you don't have to write that second line. You can go straight from the top line to the bottom. But I'm going to keep showing you that step here, so you can see clearly exactly what I'm doing, and I encourage you to keep writing it as long as you need to, to feel comfortable and confident that you're going to get it right. When the problems get harder, and some of the ones I'm going to show you soon are a bit tricky, write in that extra line to help you to get it right. 10 minus 15b. What's the highest common factor? What's the largest factor that divides both 10 and 15b? It's 5. 10 is 5 times 2, and 15 is 5 times 3b. Don't forget the b. So take out the common factor of 5. 5 times brackets 2 minus 3b. Can you check it? What do you get if you expand those brackets again? 5 times 2, which is 10, minus 5 times 3b, which is 15b. Good. Now, the highest common factor isn't always a number. Look at this one, AB plus 7A. What's the highest common factor? It's A. Both terms have a common factor of A. I've written the common factor in front of the 7 so you can see it more easily. So let's take out the common factor of A. Inside the brackets, I'm going to have B plus 7. Here's a slightly harder one. 8c squared plus 28cd. What's the highest common factor? Look carefully, there's both a numeric and variable component. 8 and 28 are both divisible by 4, 
and both terms also have C as a factor. So the highest common factor in this case is 4C. 8C squared is 4C times 2C. 28CD is 4C times 7D. So if I take out the common factor, I get 4C times brackets 2C plus 7D, close bracket. Let's check it. 4C times 2C is 8CC, which is 8C squared. And 4C times 7D is 28CD. Good. The thing is, even if you don't at first see the whole of the common factor, you can still end up with the right answer. Let me show you how that works. Suppose in that last example, you only saw the 4 at the start. You only take out the 4 as a common factor. But look inside the brackets. Now you can see clearly that there's another common factor, the C. So take it outside the brackets as well, and you end up with the same answer. Or suppose you initially only see the variable that's common, the C. Then when you look at the brackets in your answer, again, you can see there's still another common factor, 4. Take that outside the brackets, and you've got the right final product, again. So it doesn't matter if you don't find the highest common factor right away. Just factorise what you can, and always look carefully at your answer to see whether there might be another common factor that you missed. Let's try a few tricky ones to finish off with. Negative 5 minus 10f. Now in this case, there's two possible ways to go. You could just take out the common factor of 5, but then your answer is still going to have a lot of minus signs in it. In fact, if you see a question like this, with a negative number at the front and a subtraction in the middle, I recommend you first write it as a plus with two negative terms. Remember, subtracting a positive is the same as adding a negative. So now I have negative 5e plus negative 10f. So in fact, negative 5 is my common factor. So take it outside brackets. Negative 5 times e plus 2f. If you want to check this answer, again, try expanding those brackets. Negative 5e plus negative 10f. And plus negative 10f is the same as minus 10f. Here's one with a few powers of each variable. 12g squared h minus 20h cubed g. What's the highest common factor? Well, with the numbers, 4 goes into both 12 and 20. And for the variables, both terms have at least 1g and at least 1h. So, carefully dividing out the common factors, I'm left with 3g because I've taken out 1g and the h, and 5h squared, because I've taken out the g and one of the h's. 4gh times brackets 3g minus 5h squared. This one has three terms. That's okay, just look for the highest common factor of all three terms. It's 3. 3 times 2k plus 4m minus... Hmm, what am I going to put in the last place there? I need it to end up as 3 when I multiply it by the 3 out the front. What times 3 gives me 3? It's 1. OK, and finally, a tricky combination of those things. 24p squared q to the power of 4 minus 12q cubed r, plus 18q squared r squared. What's the highest common factor? Can you work it out? Look at the numbers. What number divides all three of these? It's 6. And the variables? What's common to the variables in all three terms? They all have two q's in common. 
Now divide carefully. 4p squared q squared, we've divided by 6 and taken two of the q's outside the brackets. 2qr, there's one q left over. And 3r squared, the q's have gone outside the brackets.